Where is the newborn king of the Jews? Thank you for being here this morning and being on this journey of seeking. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? These are the first words spoken in Matthew's gospel. The gospel writers were careful to use their first words to establish the theme that will resonate throughout their writings. The Jewish people believed that God alone was their king and that any human regent had the responsibility to represent God. The people looked to the king to manifest God's justice, mercy, wisdom, and protection as we heard in our first reading from Isaiah. The Magi were seeking the face of God in human representation, and they did not find it in Herod. Throughout the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus will show us the face of the Father, and in doing so, he will authentically serve as God's perfect representation and representative to the people. Even in his passion, Jesus will properly be hailed as King of the Jews, even though they misunderstood. The Magi are searching. They're following a star, something totally unusual. For Matthew, they represent all of humanity searching for God. And they will find this king not in the throne room of Herod, but rather in a stable, in an innocent child. And they will fall down in homage and present their gifts. On this feast of the Epiphany, this feast of the manifestation of Jesus as Savior of all humanity. It is important for us to ask ourselves if we are seeking the King of the Jews, if we are seeking Jesus Christ, the perfect manifestation of the face of the Father. Where do we seek the face of God? Do we seek the face of God in the face of our spouse or our children? Do we seek the face of God in the person holding the sign on the street corner? Do we seek the face of God through reading and praying with sacred scripture? Do we seek the face of God in quiet time? and silence? Do we seek the face of God praying with our families? Do we seek the face of God in service of others? It may also be good for us to ask ourselves, am I really seeking God or have I grown complacent? or lazy, or indifferent to my journey of faith. And what about us as a parish? How are we doing in manifesting Jesus here in Olympia and beyond? Do people look to us and see us as light in darkness, as hope in pain and suffering, as joy in the midst of sorrow. These are important and challenging questions on this second day of 2022, this solemnity of the Epiphany. Yet they are so important to ask, and most of all, to honestly answer. As Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. We have only today. So 
let us begin. Let us go in haste as the Magi, seeking the newborn king of the Jews. You know, the Greek word epiphany means appearance or manifestation. Occasionally, the secular world around us uses this word. But we Christians use this word in a very special way, a spiritual way. It is a way where God, the Father, the Son, and especially the Holy Spirit makes themselves present to us. A private devotion in the liturgy, especially the Mass and in Holy Scripture. I don't think, I'm going to digress for a moment, that we, that we think about that much. But he's mass manifested and he becomes an appearance in a very special way in the Eucharist. Just think about that. You come every Sunday, hopefully, because it's asked of you by God, by Jesus. Actually, it's a command. Do this in memory of me. And he's manifested to us. But we have a very special day. And we use it somewhat differently, just a little differently today in this liturgy. And I'm I'm going to try to explain that to you. But you can have manifestations at home. Heck, I have them at the monastery. I met many of you have. You felt the presence of God. That's, that's an epiphany. I love them. Thank you, Jesus. I think many times. In the church, the Christians, all Christians, may celebrate this feast of manifestation in different ways. First, we read of the angels revealed Jesus to the shepherds. There's a manifestation. In the Western church, the Roman Catholic church, the feast of the Epiphany today, celebrates Jesus' first manifestation to the Gentiles, represented by the Magi. While the Eastern Church, what we call the Orthodox Churches, the feast commemorates the baptism of Christ, at which the Father and the Holy Spirit gave combined testimony to Jesus. Jesus' identity as the Son of God. Don't you remember at the baptism at the other, Jesus got rose out of the water and the heavens opened up and he said, Behold, this is my Son. Listen to him. Those aren't the exact words, but it's basically what, he, what the Father said. Later, in the synagogue, remember that? He was reading in the synagogue and he was manifesting himself. He revealed himself through words as the promised Messiah. And what about at Cana? When he changed the water and wine. I mean, the water into wine. Jesus revealed his div divinity by transforming Water into wine, I wrote. These multiple re revelations are all suggested by the Feast of the Epiphany today. Today, 2022. A lot of years ago, but these words still speak to us, this manifestation, this appearance of our God in our hearts. I wrote, today's gospel teaches us how Christ enriches those who bring him their hearts and offer their lives to him. 
In our first reading, the adoration of the Magi, Magi fulfills the oracle of our first reading from Isaiah, and that or- oracle, it was a prophecy that the nations of the world would travel to the holy city following a brilliant light, bringing gold and incense to contribute to the worship of God. If you listen closely to the first reading. And then on our psalm, Psalm 72, verses 10 and 11, is a picture of kings from foreign lands bringing gifts to pay homage to a just king in Israel. And it's St. Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus. That was today's second reading expresses God's secret plan in clearer terms. Goes something like this, just a little bit of it. The Gentiles are co-heirs, co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, St. Paul wrote. Today's gospel reminds us that if God brought the Magi, and they were foreigners and pagans, if he could to recognize them and give Jesus proper respect as the king of the Jews, who should know that there is nothing in our sinful lives that would keep us from us bringing ourselves to Jesus? That's truth, folks. You can't sin enough. I mean, you can't over sin. That can't be forgiven. It it keeps us away right. But if we're contrite and we're we're truly sorry and we confess it, it goes away. We're no longer guilty. It's something to never forget. Now let's look a little closer at our gospel reading. There are three groups of groups of people who reacted to the epiphany of Christ's birth. The first group, headed by King Herod, tried to eliminate Jesus. Remember? He tried. The second group, priests and scribes, ignored Jesus. And the third group are represented by the shepherds and the magi. They came to adore Jesus. Now what does that all mean to us today in Olympia? Glacia, surrounding area, wherever you came from today. Our readings are a Christian image for us, as if that's what they are. Each and every one of us. Now let me explain. First, we must make sure that we belong to the third group. We do this by A, actively worshiping Jesus at Mass with the gold of our love, the myrrh of our humility, and the frankincense of our adoration. B. By giving due direction to our lives, just as the Magi chose another route to return to their homes, let us choose a better way of life, abstaining from proud, unjust, and impure thoughts words and actions, evil habits, and selfish behavior. C, by becoming stars, just like the star in the sky. Yep. Becoming stars leading others to Jesus. That's what we need to do. And at the end of the Mass, there is a way of doing it. Now, you'll find out. 
So don't leave early because there's a way. Father Jim set it up. I didn't even know it was going to work with my homily. Must have been the Holy Spirit, huh? <laughs> so I wrote, let us remove the darkness of the evil around us by radiating the light of Jesus as love through selfish, selfless service, unconditional forgiveness, and compassion and loving care. Like the Magi, let us offer Jesus our gifts on this feast of the Epiphany, and let us do so every day, a gift of our life, by offering it on the offer altar during the Holy Mass. And every morning, as soon as we get up, asking for the strength, strengthening and anointing of the Holy Spirit to do good and avoid evil during the course of our day. Can you see yourselves, your eyes open, and the first thing your thought is, God? Wouldn't that be cool? Instead of some foolish other thing that doesn't make any difference? I got to get down to make the coffee. You know? But you go, at least you say hi to Jesus. It's a real simple spirituality, but it's a spirituality of a true and great believer.